Hello and welcome to the next episode of my Learn With Me series on the OP6. So, so far we've discussed what I'm doing with this series. We've discussed my thoughts on the synthesizer from a first impression perspective. We've listened to a few presets. We've listened to the basic waveform sounds and we've constructed a basic subtractive synthesizer. I think in constructing that basic synthesizer, I illustrated something which I think is pretty important about this synth. And let me tell you what that is. Well, conventionally, a lot of synthesizers, subtractive synthesizers in particular, have a modulation matrix. A modulation matrix allows you to route modulation sources to various destinations. And a lot of people would say, well, that makes it similar to a modular synthesizer. I would say to some extent it does, but broadly it doesn't. And the reason that it doesn't is on those synthesizers, you cannot adjust the routing of the audio. In other words, there is a normal audio routing path and you can simply make modulations. So some semi-modular synthesizers, for example, the Mini Brute 2, have exactly this design. So you have a fixed audio path and you can make modulation changes to that path, but you cannot reroute or rearrange everything. And I think that misses one of the most powerful tricks of a modular synthesizer. Now, possibly the name Altered FM Synthesizer gave people the wrong impression of what the OP6 is. So while the OP6 is sold as an FM synthesizer, you can even load DX7 patches onto it. These six operators don't have to interact with each other through FM. They can generate their own sounds and they can combine those sounds in various ways. So in a sense, what you have is six either sound or processing elements, which can be arranged in a block diagram. So I would describe what this does as being more like a modular synthesizer in its capability. On the downside, um, while we have these six operators, we actually only have three envelopes and three LFOs in addition to the envelopes built into the operators. So modulation wise, considering the number of sound sources, it seems a little sparse, but I think there's still a lot of possibility. What I'd like to experiment with today is what the modes of the operators are beyond FM, including FM. So as we've been doing, let's get an init patch and let's pick an, op uh, pick an algorithm. Maybe algorithm five looks good. So what we have are these three pages of settings which relate to those operators. When you go to a page, those squares in the top right corner indicate how many pages of settings there are. I can press the key multiple times to go through the pages, or I can use the page up and down buttons to go through those pages. So you can see that we have two pages there, three pages there, one page there, six pages of settings per operator. Initially, we're just gonna focus on the mode page. What is the mode page? Well, we've already seen that the mode page lets us select the waveform but what we're going to be experimenting with is this mode control. So the mode control affects what mode or what action that operator is going to be carrying out. So let's first say that I'm going to experiment using only two operators. I'm going to use operator one and two, one of them to modulate and one of them to act as a carrier. This will allow me to also introduce the first of the modes, the mute mode. So what mute means is no sound is passed through or played back. So again, this one could go into the mute mode. Another mode that we have available to us is bypass mode. So bypass mode means the sound that comes into it from the operator modulating it will pass through. So this gives us an opportunity Notice that operator six is a modulator in this diagram, but it's acting as though it were the carrier. Why? Because operator five is in bypass mode. So we've now introduced two. I'm gonna mute them because I'm not using them. You'll note when they're muted, the lights go off. 
so we can see that actually only two operators are in use here. So let's go back to this two operator setup. Let's turn up operator one, operator two is down. So operator one is in FM mode. What does FM mode mean? FM mode means it will take the frequency of the oscillator that's part of this operator and it will modulate the frequency based on the frequency of another operator's output. So what does that sound like? I'm going to turn this operator down to the lowest possible pitch, that is 128th of the frequency of the note that I play, and I'm going to turn this up. So hopefully you can hear that sounds like a vibrato, because the frequency is low, so we can hear the movement, but let me increase the frequency slowly. You can hear that as we get higher up, instead of hearing the motion, we hear a timbrel shift. And the volume adjusts the intensity of that effect. So that's what frequency modulation sounds like. What other parameters do they give us? Well, we've looked at these already. There is a width parameter which adjusts the um, duty cycle or pulse width of the wave that is being generated. And we have feedback, which causes the operator's oscillator to be self-modulating. So feedback You can hear that feedback sounds similar to modulating from this other operator. FM is something I'm going to come back to and spend some more time on, but note that this is not limited to sine waves as is the case for classic FM synthesizers. You can use other waveforms too. So let's move to the next one. Next one is a ring modulator. You can think of ring modulation as a type of amplitude modulation. So in other words, rather than adjusting the frequency of one waveform with another, we're adjusting the amplitude of one waveform with another. So first let's hear what it sounds like in the basic case. Let's have them both set to the same ratio. There are a couple of parameters which may be of interest here, which I'm going to take a little diversion to look at. On the miscellaneous pages, we have an option to select the phase of the oscillators. So what we can do is we can require that they be in sync with one another, meaning the same phase, or the phases can be free running. So free running will mean if we detune them, they will not start coincident with one another. This won't necessarily matter that much for certain sounds, but in some sounds it can make quite a difference. I'm going to leave it on its default uh, synchronized mode. So ring modulation. We've heard how it sounds. Let's try adjusting the depth. So when the depth is zero, we hear the original waveform of operator one unmodified. When we turn it up to max, we hear the fully ring modulated sound. There is a shape parameter, which seems to make some additional uh, timbrel adjustment. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but you can hear that it becomes brighter as we play it, um, increase that. Let's experiment now changing the relative pitch. So now it sounds a bit like a, a dial tone. And I think the reason that sounds like a dial tone is the amplitude modulation is making you think you can hear two tones playing simultaneously, even though they're not being mixed. And when the frequency of the modulator is higher than the frequency of the thing being modulated, then you only hear that higher frequency. So only when it's lower pitched do you hear this sort of ghost tone. Turn the depth down. Shape up. So I've only shown you what this sounds like, but 
it would be rather dull if all this was was a fixed tombral change. Hear that motion. So how do we make motion occur? Well, this is the envelopes. So each of the operators has an envelope, uh, ADSR envelope. So let's, um, this is the carrier operator one. I'm gonna make a sort of pluck sound here. One second, it's down. Now, let's bring this in. So this second operator is adjusted by this envelope. So let's for now set the release to maximum, let's set a linear curve. So effectively this will be playing at whatever level I set at all times. I have the ability also to adjust the pitch by detuning. So you can hear a slight tombral shift with that, not tremendous, whereas in FM you would probably notice a larger change. So I think already though we can hear some relatively interesting sounds happening. Let's try a different waveform, square. So the shape of this waveform also makes a big difference to how it sounds. Notice operator 2 is in FM mode, but since there is nothing modulating it, there's no frequency modulation occurring because the input is zero. So let's go back to operator 1. Let's try the next mode, filter mode. So what filter mode does is What filter mode is, let me set this back to zero. Filter will mean that operator one acts as a filter. And the output of that filter is a mixture of an oscillator that it is generating itself and the input. So this is operator two. Let me turn this up. This is operator one. So what I'm doing is cross mixing the generated sound from the input sound. I can adjust the type of filter, whole range of different filter characters that are selectable, low pass being the default. I can adjust the cutoff, the resonance. Okay, pretty interesting. Let's go next to filter FM. So filter FM is also filtering, but the cutoff is going to be modulated by operator two. So when the frequency is low, we can hear the motion. As the frequency goes up of the modulator, we shift into a tombral change. That's resonance. So you hear resonance, much sharper sound, more like FM. Quite interesting. Let's move on. Wave folder. Our wave folder, like the filter, is going to be mixing the two inputs. So this is only operator one. And there is no change happening here. Why is there no change? Because I have not adjusted the gain parameter. So this is Operator 2, 
This is all operator one. The gain, what it's doing here is it's amplifying the waveform such that it folds back on itself. Let's look at the waveform. Turn that all the way down. So you'll note that when we're adjusting this mix, oscillator mix, when it's all the way in the positive direction, still has operator 2 mixed in. We can see it here. But when we turn it all the way down, it only has operator 2 in. So when we have it pure like this, let's have a look at the, see it fold back on itself. We also have bias. So what bias is doing is the wave folding is still happening, but it's treating it as though zero was a different point. So the wave goes up, it folds back on itself. So the more we amplify, instead of getting a louder signal, the folding back is generating harmonics and bias can adjust that. So you can think of this as being something like the filter. Um, effect I'm gonna, is the final one. So let's look at the effect one. So what's happening with effect here, just like the ones we've been looking at, we have, if I set the mix down to zero, we're only gonna hear this, this operator. So let's just play this one. So now this is not generating any sound. Operator one's oscillator is not factoring into the mix here. This is the first effect type, peak EQ. So what's this? I'm going to change the waveform to something with more harmonics. Let's go for, uh, let's go for the saw wave, I suppose. Um, sorry, I should have done that on operator two. Saw wave. Go back to operator one. So hopefully you can hear that this is a bit like a peaking filter, but it's not actually eliminating any frequencies. It's only emphasizing some. And notice that this is set in semitones. So in other words, this is tracking the keyboard. So in this case, this is emphasizing the fundamental. Next one is a shelving EQ. So we can boost the high end, or we can boost the low end. Next, a phaser, classic phaser effect. Next, So this is a short delay, but the delay doesn't have feedback. So it would be interesting to use this in an algorithm slot where there's feedback. So the delay's happening, but it's only playing back the sound once. Next one is a comb filter, probably an interesting one. Because a comb filter is a type of filter which is effectively um, emphasizing and removing alternate harmonics. And when that's used frequency tracked, it can be used as a resonator in the same sense as car plus strong resonators. So in other words, these very short delay lines overlaying on themselves can act as a comb filter and vice versa. So the comb filter here, I'm pretty sure one of the presets was called comb piano, which I imagine is using the comb filter. I'm gonna go back to operator two, turn it back to a sine wave. And I guess if we adjust the feedback, yeah, so we have something of that resonant, plucky sound like you would get with Coppola Strong. Next mode, distortion, and low end gain. So no distortion, this is a sine wave coming in. 
up to a lot of distortion. Next one, drive. So those are both distortion or ways of adjusting the shape of the wave. Next one, decimator. So this is like resampling. So this is decreasing the sample rate. And this one is decreasing the bit rate. So this is like a bit crush. And this is like a sample rate reduction. Any more? Wave shaper. Okay, so this has a series of wave shaping operations, which I suspect are a mapping of the values of amplitude that could occur to some other set. So there's a whole family of different shapes. Anything else? Punch. So this adds a sort of percussive transient to the beginning of the sound. And that's the last one. Okay, so I've gone through all of the different operator types now. You can hear that they all sound different. I haven't really experimented very much with the envelopes. When we get into designing some real sounds, we'll think about exactly how those are going to interact. But hopefully you can understand that we have six potential sound sources and potential processing sources. So we can make signal chains which are multi-input, multi-processing, coming to an output. We're not limited to the classic frequency modulation. We're given a whole slew of options, which can be, depending on the algorithm that we either pick or design, constructed and rooted differently. So I think we have a lot of flexibility here, and I think this aspect of using these other modes along with the different algorithms and especially user algorithms is what means that FM is underselling this synthesizer. This synthesizer goes well beyond what a classic FM synth does. It's not just altering how it works. For me, it's a fundamentally different proposition. So I hope this has been interesting to see. I hope you'll join me for some more videos in this series and learn with me the op six to get to grips with it and hopefully get to some of the deeper features. But in any case, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching this video and goodbye.